All right, so I want to talk about environmental limits on microbial growth. So bacteria cells don't regulate their own temperature, okay? So their temperature is going to match that of the environment. And um, naturally, we understand that microbes are present in almost every imaginable environment. We see them under very high temperature conditions, and we see them in very low temperature conditions, between 0 and 20 degrees Celsius, and of course between, you know, say 63 and over 100 degrees Celsius. So we can see that they're diverse, but also that their temperature is going to match that of the uh, environment. So you're going to have to be able to uh, essentially be adapted to these different circumstances, whether it's really hot, you have special um, things going on, or if you're really cold, you have special proteins and special lipids that are, um, you know, a little bit more cold resistant, meaning that they're a little more flexible and able to do the things uh, that normal proteins and lipids would have to do. At, you know, regular, what we would consider maybe 25 degrees Celsius, you know, room temperature, or a little bit, you know, cool, a cool room. Anyway, every organism basically has an optimal temperature then, uh, essentially a temperature that it grows best at, and that's, and that's natural, I mean, that's completely understandable, um, you know, things tend to function best at certain temperatures, just like our bodies tend to function best at like 98.6 degrees uh, Celsius, I mean, Fahrenheit rather, um, but Nonetheless, it's still the same principle, basically. And um, they also have a maximum and minimum temperature, and that's going to define, basically define this and limit the growth, okay? That's going to state where these things are going to function optimally. And anything outside of that range is, is just simply going to be, it's going to kill them, okay? It's not, they're not going to survive in those, under those conditions. So the ones I have listed here are um, psychrophiles, which exist in very cold temperatures, that's 0 to 20 degrees Celsius. Then I have mesophiles, which are many of your common human pathogens, and that's around 15 to 45 degrees Celsius is the range. Uh, thermophiles, which are pretty, you know, can withstand some pretty high temperatures, 40 to 80 degrees Celsius um, is pretty high. And then, of course, your extreme thermophiles, which are things that live in hot springs or, you know, in, in uh, thermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. And those exist in between 65 and 113 degrees Celsius, so very, very high temperatures. And you can see this here represented on the graph in color and um, demonstrating each of these generation times uh, in relation to temperature. So the classification by growth temperature is the next thing I want to talk about, and that is mesophiles grow in an optimum range, and that range is between 20 and 40 degrees Celsius, with a minimum of 15 degrees Celsius, and a maximum of 45 degrees Celsius. So they're going to be defined by this range here, this 15 to 45 degrees. And they grow best, you know, in an optimum range between 20 and 40. So somewhere between 20 and 40 is where you're going to find the maximum rate of growth. Okay, so maximum division, uh, multiple, you know, cell divisions within that range. Uh, the psychrophiles are microbes that grow best at low temperatures. So they grow at temperatures as low as zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so very, very cold. And the optimum growth temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. And as I said before, I might have talked a little bit about this just a few minutes ago, which is that the proteins of these organisms are more flexible. And that makes perfect sense because at colder temperatures, obviously the proteins aren't going to work as well. It's the same principle as heat. We know at high temperatures, proteins denature and they don't work. We also know that if you cool them down enough, these proteins are dynamic. Um, they're moving, you know, they're essentially, they're, they're um, enzymes and they're catalyzing reactions and they have to be, they have some movement and if they don't have that movement then they're not going to work properly. So obviously they're going to have to be more flexible, okay, than those of like say mesophiles over here which are basically in our normal temperature range between, you know, 15 and uh, between 20 and 40 degrees. So obviously that's going to be an issue and it's also going to be an issue, this flexibility is also going to be an issue for, um, the lipids as well. Okay, you're going to have more on saturation leading to, you know, more fl basically um, more fluid lipid membranes and things like that or um, phospholipid bilayers. Also, um, an interesting part of this increased flexibility, which, which is why these psychrophiles are not able to exist at higher temperatures. And that is simply because what, what we see here is that the proteins will denature at lower temperatures, okay? So, like, for instance, our, our proteins might need to more heat, okay? 
in order to denature. But obviously, when you're talking about these um, these psychrophiles, you're going to be dealing with you know much more flexible protein, so a slight increase in temperature above that you know above its uh, its range, so above 20 degrees Celsius. Let's say it's gonna it's gonna start to cause these proteins to denature. And of course, the membranes are always um, more fluid due to the higher degree of unsaturation. So you add more unsaturation, you have a more fluid membrane. And I added barophiles, or barophils down here, rather. And those are just basically organisms that grow under very high pressure, okay? And that high pressure can usually be found at the bottom of the ocean is a classic place to talk about it. Um, we're very surprised when we see all the life that actually exists at the bottom of the ocean because we think of it as a very, you know, cold, dark, you know, barren place. But life is thriving down there as well, and a lot of those organisms happen to be these uh, barophilic. They're able to survive under high pressure. So the next thing I want to talk about, which is kind of in the same area here, um, again, environmental conditions, and that's pH changes. So we know that enzymes only function in a narrow pH range, and we know that they only function in that narrow pH range because they're charged. A lot of these amino acids are charges, are char have charges on them, and um, they have to be at a they have to have a specific charge in order to do their job. Some cases it's positive, some cases it's negative, some cases it's, sometimes it's neutral. I mean, it depends. It depends on the conditions. Uh, so obviously, pH is going to affect the way enzymes function. And um, so we have essentially three groups. We have these uh, neutrophiles, which are going to basically exist in, around neutral pH. So we think of you know physiological pH as 7.4. Uh, so you know we might call these between a pH range of 5 to 8. So within that neutral range. Then we have the acidophiles, and they basically grow to pH of 0 to 5. Obviously, 0 being very very low pH, and 5 also being a pretty low pH by our own standards as humans. So. Uh, they're able to survive under low pH. And then also we have these alkylophiles or alkophiles which grow at a pH of 9 to 11. So obviously they're able to tolerate much higher pHs. Okay? And you can see that here in the, you know, in the growth. So, the, so you can see this maximum growth for the acidophiles up around, you know, around a pH of 3, 2.8 to 3. And then if you look at the neutrophiles, you can see that their pH um, optimum is around 7 and around 10 for the alkyphiles. And in keeping with that theme, the last little thing I want to kind of introduce here are the changes in water activity. So I want to talk about halophiles. And these halophiles evolved in, you know, high salt concentration, so high NaCl. And you might think salt water has a high concentration, but it's actually far higher than that. It's um, two to four moles of HCl higher. You know, it's it's two to four moles HCl, so it's much higher than seawater. It's ten times that of seawater. And you can see this reddish color um, is due to their activity.